Yeah, I mean, when I think about my home invasion situation, the guy was doing a lot of talking and threatening and mm -hmm. acting tough. In my mind, I just said, I have to kill him to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. And I was just quiet. And I just was plotting how to kill him, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And I thought I killed him when I walked out of the room. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the guys who talk tough, oh, I'm going to do this to you. They're, I feel most of the time they're just scared. They're trying to figure out a way to get out of it. Mm -hmm. by, by puffing themselves up and scaring you. Yeah. If they were serious about doing something to you, they're just going to do it to you. When I did what I did, I didn't say a word. Yeah. I yeah. quietly did what I had to do yeah, it's to be get here. out of a, a situation where I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Look, look at look at this. When I would teach um, self-defense courses, I, I would tell people and I encourage them to pull up the thing about Mike Tyson and, um, and uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Mitch, Mitch Green. Mitch Green, yeah. When Tyson, it was heavyweight champion of the world, the baddest man on the planet, didn't make the mental switch yet. When Mitch, Mitch Green came up to him, ripped his pockets open, and took his money, right? And Tyson hesitated because he's trying to, you know, trying to understand the situation. You Google that. And Tyson says himself, he says, I hadn't been in fighting in seven years. You know, he said, he's like, you know, I was scared is what the first thing he said, right? Right. Now, imagine if Mitch Green had a knife and wanted to stab him. He would be, Tyson would be gone. Here's a guy with, you know, some of the best tools on the planet at, at his height. If he didn't, you know, he later made the mental switch when uh, Green came at him the second time, whatever, he, he ended up hitting him. But that just goes to show you you got to make this first. And I know personally that shit happened to me. I remember I, I pulled in a gas station one time, long time ago. And some Jamaican dude started screaming on me. <laughs> and I'm like, who is this? Like, 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 I don't know if I cut him off. I don't know what, he, what his beef was. But he had a real strong patois, you know. And I couldn't quite make out what he was talking about. But he got up. On me, at first I was like, man, get the fuck out of here. What? And he's like, you know, me not scared of you. Then he starts like, you know, he gets up gets up in my face and he's like calling me all kinds of clots and shit. I don't know what he's saying. Blood clot. Yeah, you know, rust clot, pussy clot, 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 clot. I'm like, and I'm like, whoa. I'm like, I was like, what the fuck? I actually was scared for a second because I couldn't figure out what was happening. But then part of me is like, yo, he's right up on me. And... One image I had in my head, because I remember one time on the basketball court, this this little dude was talking to this cat that was playing, gotten some beef with him, and the, the big dude that that you know he had the ball in his, you know, it was like just listening to him, whatever. And next thing I know, the little dude with box cutter sliced my man. Big dude whoo, slammed him, put him out. But this guy's got a slice across his face for the rest of his life. That resonated with me. That shit came back when this dude was, I know what I do with it. And I, and I went like this. I was like, oh shit, he's too close. And I went like this. Just like this. Like, not, no, no stronger than this. I just kind of went like that. But this hand hit him in the nose. <laughs> hit him right in the face. And he was like, my, you know, it's blood fire. Uh, uh, butter burrows. And I was like, which is, I think, a, a gay donkey. I don't know what the fuck that was. A, but a, a Batiman is a like No, but he said Batiburo. Batiburo. Okay. I, I, I think it's a gay donkey. He called me a gay donkey. I don't know what the fuck that was. But, but, <laughs> but I went like this, like on some like not not heavy shit. I went like this. And it's a... Blah, 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 poop. Ah! Ah! And, and then I was like, that's, that's right. All I got to do is... You know, but I was scared at first. Yeah. But then it was like, boom. Oh, uh, <laughs> it was not like that. But it was, and he like, he left me alone. I don't know what his problem was, but I remember, goddamn, for a second, like I was vulnerable. He could have, he could have shanked me or something because he came up on me or whatever. But I was like, nah, man, that's, <laughs> I have to make that switch. I was busy trying to figure out what his beef was or what the fuck he was saying to me. But that resonated. I'm like, I was driving, you know, like just kind of like shit. I can't let that happen again, you know. But so that that that's a long, long time ago. 
but it reinforced the fact that you got to make the mental switch first because I was vulnerable at that time. Yeah, I mean, listen, I interviewed uh, Hurricane Chris, who was at a gas station, and some crazy guy walked up to him and tried to, like, open his car door and mm -hmm. had, like, this huge, like, piece of concrete in his pocket, and he ended up having to shoot him in self-defense. Mm -hmm. And he went to court, and he took the stand, and he ended up beating the case. Mm -hmm. He's facing murder charges. But, yeah, at a gas station, some crazy person approaches you, and they're trying to get in your car. And I think he actually got a gun in his car, so he was worried that the guy might get to right, his gun. Right. and. There was just a lot going on very quickly. Mm. And, you know, at the end of the day, someone ended up dying. But he was just minding his own business. Yeah. And these types of things happen. I mean, we've all run into crazy yeah. at some point in our lives. And we've all had to make a decision whether you just try, you know, you try to get out of every, you know, no one really tries to confront crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? No one goes out of their way to find a crazy person and argue with them. Mm -hmm. But it comes your way and you have to decide and luckily, in my cases, I've always just managed to just walk away and get in my car and leave. Mm -hmm. Because if they're already acting crazy now, who knows what will happen if there's a confrontation. Mm -hmm. They might pull out a baseball bat out of their butt. I don't know. Like, you don't, you don't know what the hell's That'd going on impressive. with this person. So, yeah, man, I'm glad you got out of that okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, it teaches me a lesson. Yep. And sometimes you just might have to out crazy somebody else, you know? You just be like, where's the Burger King? Where is he? You know, you and nobody's ready for that. And then it's like, you just walk on. That's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah.